Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Welcome to another edition of It Takes Two. Myself, Bilal Ali, who is your host, and my co host, Sister Ruby Sowa. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Alaikum salam wa wa And our guest today, Sayyid Bahl Alum. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyid. Wa alaikum salam wa Good to see you both. Good to see you both. Thank you. So, this is a program, as you know, where we try to look at the challenges that naturally occur in marriage and try to explore and come up with more creative ways of addressing these issues so you can have more functional romance. Uh, I have a letter that we can jump into straight away to make best use of time. And this one uh, is a very troubling letter. Um, it reads, uh, There it takes two. I think I'm in love with the resident Alim. This is very inconvenient because I am married with two children. Um, I'm sure this is not a ficky issue. Um, as in a sense, the question is, is just related to is this permissible or not? Because obviously this is... Uh, is not acceptable but in terms of thing love is something of the heart so i don't know if you could could say about love in islam or you know, how do people regulate them themselves or their behavior as well i mean love as you said it's a matter of a heart and uh, you can love or everyone every person can love whoever the problem is with the act but at the same time, uh, love can be the first step and then the, we've got the second and the third. Mm -hmm. So unless we have uh, control on the first the, and stop ourselves from going to the second and the third uh, and so on and so forth. So if she has fallen in love, I think she can, she should control herself because she's mm -hmm. married with two children mm -hmm. uh, and she yeah. should try not to... Uh, go on with her feeling try to control things mm -hmm. and she is going to be the only person who can do that and we can't at this stage tell her what to do because i don't know whether they are seeing the resident alim on daily basis mm -hmm. on weekly basis uh, the way they see him it all depends but uh, falling in love is not something haram as long as she is not acting or she is not performing a haram act and at the same time, she should uh, uh, like control the love or the feeling as she is married. Mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. um, and this is quite common um, in you know any person in a, in a position, a high position, be it at work or a teacher, or a student might have an infatuation or fall in love yeah, with a teacher. Yeah, yeah. Female authority. Yep, yep. Was, someone in power, um, you know, in, in authority, as you said, this is quite common. It's a, it can be a feeling that comes and goes, but as I say, it said, it's not, I don't think she's saying she's going to act upon those feelings. And it might just be, you know, she frequents them more small than she needs to because she's infatuated with this person. Mm -hmm. But um, the feeling of being in love, you know, it's, I guess it's a natural thing, but it's the way you conduct yourself. This woman is married, and a lot of people would be saying, shock, horror, and what a shameful act. I don't think she's acting... Doesn't sound like she's done anything. It, but what yeah. I'm sensing is that there's problems going on in the marriage. Because she's very aware that she's married and she's got children, so it looks like these feelings have come as a surprise for her. I don't mm -hmm. think she intentionally went to find her. A relationship or something but obviously this person whatever it is is fulfilling a need maybe she's bored at home I'm not justifying her feelings mm -hmm. I'm just saying maybe it's something that she she realizes that she might like this uh, the was it a sheikh did you Alim? say Alim um, <coughs> more or has feelings for the Alim more than she needs I think a lot of the time with women and I'm not saying it's her if you have a problem and you go to an Alim and the alam is very considerate and very caring. Sometimes their feelings can get confused in terms of, <coughs> oh, that's somebody who understands me, the, the wisdom they're giving me is so Maybe different. she isn't even in love with the alam. Maybe then. she does Just a bit of infatuation it or could be. a sort of emotional um, crutch. This happens to exactly. people in, um, when they go for therapy and then they think, oh, my counsellor or my therapist understands me so much. And they call it transference when the person sort of projects mm -hmm. these feelings. But it's not... It's not love, it's not... But you know what, I'm just going to... Superficial. ...stir the teapot a little please bit. Please do, please Maybe do. Maybe the Alem's giving her 
God forbid, mixed signals. This does happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe it's possible. you don't know it's what's possible. going on. The oh, there might be, you know, a bit too friendly. We mm -hmm. we don't know, and maybe that's confusing her. That that does happen. People are fallible. Sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, it's about recognizing your feelings. What is she going to do about these feelings? What is she going to act upon it, or is it just a fi a feeling, a phase? You know, could be just a phase. What what, what say you say? That, um, is it possible that she? Or what about in situations where the alim isn't giving out those signals and it's just that the sister is misunderstanding his being attentive? And that happens as well sometimes. You know? It get does, confused. but according to the question, uh, she hasn't mentioned, so let's assume he hasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, in some societies uh, in the Arabia or some, some other countries, uh, the, some communities, they deal with the alim as if he is a member of the family. So there is no boundaries between them and suddenly things happen, which is very critical. The alim should be aware of that. Usually mm -hmm. ulama, especially resident alims, uh, they are aware or even within their lessons, they've been told to be careful and to be aware. Uh, the issue I would like to raise is, it sounds like the relation or the feeling uh, at the, is at the beginning and I think it is easier for her to control herself, mm -hmm. to put a limit, because with each relation, the first stage is the easier part. Uh, it may get deeper and deeper, and it will be very difficult for her to deny the feeling or to get changed when things get more and more difficult. So let's have the uh, border clear now from her okay. side. And Nip let's it in try the bud. And uh, one of the important issues is to be away from the source of, uh, we call it the source of irritation or source of problem. And here, this can be defined as the meetings, uh, delivering a speech, uh, I don't know if he's doing family therapy. I'm sure she knows how to minimize the conflict. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. she shouldn't go to the mosque then? If this is the case, at some stage she should go less. Or to a different mosque, maybe. Or maybe we should, uh, the islands, as you said, should be trained as to how to conduct themselves. Because if you're vulnerable, for example, mm -hmm. and somebody smiles at you, and they smile at you again, and they smile at you again, you might read, interpret that as something else. Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe there needs to be, I'm sure there is protocols, just as there are with teachers and with, um, you know, executives how you conduct yourself mm -hmm, in mm -hmm, certain mm -hmm. places but I think this is just a I, I'm hoping it's just an infatuation it sounds like she's missing something in her I, I was going to say for her feelings to be like that not just this not just to pertain to this specific sister but just generally in these in situations where this kind of thing occurs could it be that the person is looking for a way out like there is a problem at home and the, it's just projecting this, this this desire onto the the particular alim, but it's not genuinely love. Because I'm wondering, um, well, what is love? It I might think. be, but to tell you the truth, the question is quite clear, and I think she knows what she's doing. And she, clearly, it sounds like she's fallen in love. Mm -hmm. uh, she hasn't mentioned that the alim been doing anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe she doesn't know, recognize the signs. He right? may not know she exists. What if it's a situation like that? Because be. people fall it in love with you know, a film star on the television, they convince it. On the phone, maybe. It wouldn't change the outcome result. Uh, each way she should, uh, uh, it's better for her and for her husband to uh, put a stop and to uh, uh, get a step backward and try to limit the number of meetings or uh, mm -hmm. attending the mosque. I think mm -hmm. the issue here is because she's married and marriage is so sacred, it's going over the line. If she was a single person and she had these feelings, I think it would be a lot more accepting and more generous yeah, of her. Yeah. But the fact that she's married... It's alarming. It, I wouldn't say it's alarming. I think I, she's I find shocked. It but why? Find it why do you find it alarming? No, no um, again, not in a judgmental way, but just to say, you know, because she says, this is very inconvenient because I'm married with two children, so I'm not sure what the inconvenience is. The feel, is well, it sounds like, well, if, he, if her, she wasn't married, then this is something she possibly would pursue. Hmm. 
Because there's us. islands out there who have more than one wife, and you know, maybe this is someone that she thinks they, you know, she's very attracted to. But let's go back to the fact that she's married, and there's protocols. So there, this mm -hmm. isn't going to mm -hmm. go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to do anything, inshallah, that is going to wrong their souls because they have a, a feeling or whatever it is. She, it might not even be real. It might be in her mind. You know, we don't know. Mm -hmm. So I say, you know, because feelings are so, they can take over your actions, try and distance yourself from the person because sometimes it's so tempting to, it's like a, an addiction, it gives you a hit, it gives her something probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe just his time or acknowledging her. We don't know what's going on in her relationship. So pull yourself back and try and look for what you're missing inside your marriage or through family or through friends. But that is definitely... A side that you can't, she cannot even, That's you know, point. venture into. That is definitely an important and point. And get yourself engaged in other things because it's like, uh, as the sister mentioned, I mean, the more she get into the feeling, mm. or to the act, or or the thoughts, or the thinking, the moment, thought. Yeah. It's like uh, uh, with obsessive compulsive disorder. You know, mm -hmm. the more they get into the thing, they think about it, then they act, and then it gets more and more. Exactly mm -hmm. the same. So the uh, the, the more away or the more uh, boundary or a line to be put between her and the place of uh, meeting or, or speech or salah or whatever at this stage maybe in six months time everything will go back to normal we don't know. it happens Inshallah. for so many people at some stage because they are bored or because they have uh, extra time doing here and there um, not being so busy, so many issues. That's, that's what I wanted to ask: is that can the, can things like this be a result of neglect? Like if a person has been maybe uh, you know not you felt they don't they don't feel the presence of the other half, and so they their mind drifts. Yeah, or not satisfied with the other half, or the other half is not uh, up to the this character. It all depends. But each way, uh, the solution or the way. Uh, of her getting away from the thingy uh, would put her in a deeper problem and mm -hmm. would involve mm -hmm. more haram acts and things. At this stage she should uh, uh, decide and it's a no-go area and she should uh, respect her decision as she is married with two children and thought everyone might have a thought here and there. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa wa jal will never punish people for the thought and in fact, if she stops the thought or con and or control the thought and don't do haram act and stay with her husband, she will gain more thawab and higher level in heaven. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. instead of her like getting a sin, she will be in a higher level and uh, she will feel so many compensation she will get and she probably will feel that it happened for so many people and it can happen to husbands, not uh, nowadays most husbands they are they cannot get married to or have a second or a third wife so same thing and same thing it happened to others when they get in love uh, fall in love with any person or individual who they are not allowed to get married to mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. so she is not the only person and she is not, not, she's not the first in person no. to be in this situation and she's not the first and not the only person and uh, she should realize that what she's doing by stopping herself is something great and she is earning great thawab and Allah subhanahu azza wa jal will pay her and uh, a lot of reward will get into her and so can on and I, so forth can I just say that not all marriages are love marriages you know you could have been in a marriage at the time that for whatever reason you married the person and maybe she's never been in love with her husband mm -hmm. so this is a new feeling maybe. for her yeah. but what we have to decipher is there's obviously an issue with for her sure, and for her sure. and instead of going on to something that you shouldn't be even t going to towards, address what's going on at home, you need to are. address yeah. what's going on in yourself and at home and that's no limits i mean that's you can't even you, it's a no-go area you do not mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. interfere with you know somebody who's married and you're married that's you know that's where's the blessing in that yeah, something that doesn't taboo. start with the blessing that's it's not going to end in yeah. a blessing i wanted to ask you a question said about the responsibility of the alim plural alim should i say um, 
because they oftentimes will be meeting vulnerable women or, or vulnerable people in general, but in particular sisters married and unmarried. Is, you mentioned, but you only touched on it briefly, about in, when clerical, yeah, like mm. clerical training, but is it dangerous or is it a problem in some societies that you said are, they, are treated like family or the, the mahram, non-mahram kind of uh, dynamic uh, goes to the side and says, oh, it's an alim, so she can be alone with him or is this yeah, a it's scholar not, or not alone? It's not or? dangerous uh, as much as it's very sensitive. For an alim to be a successful alim, he, uh, there are kind of ethical issues, usually not taught, but uh, given to the resident alim, to alim who always get in touch with different members of society. Mm -hmm. And one of the measures, uh, try to avoid being alone with the sisters. Uh, uh, some ulama, they keep the doors open. Mm -hmm. Small, minor things, but they all give a hint that uh, the relationship is not a, a private relationship. It's a kind of like a, a, a doctor with a patient or a teacher mm -hmm. with a student. I'm sure the alim can give that hint, uh, kind of hint to the any member of the society. Yes. And uh, it's happened, it's happened not only with ladies, it's happened with uh, even some men without thinking about law, but they may feel like they want the alim to become like their friends. They expect him to answer their calls at one o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had some calls at one o'clock and two o'clock where I felt that is a bizarre scenario. I can't read <laughs> because they have become so friendly mm -hmm. and then they, at some stage, they start sending boundaries. you... Uh, boundaries. Boundaries, that's a word. Boundaries, that's a word. boundaries, boundaries exactly. Yeah. Uh, because for the alim to be successful, he needs to resolve their problems. But once he resolves problems and he becomes so friendly, at so many stages, he becomes so, so friendly and uh, without the boundaries or the borderline, Problems. Thing got mixed up. Yeah. So this, and at the same time, so some ulama they had a big wall in between them, and those also they are not successful resident alim. Resident alim is different than any alim, because we've got, we've got scholar, we've got uh, student talib in Hausa, we've got mushtahid, we've got ayatollah, we've got mm -hmm. alim, we've got resident alim, we've got a teacher, we've got a leader, we've got a merge. Uh, it's like different roles. Right? Different roles. Resident alim is like the GP. Mm. Every day he needs the prayer, uh, and on Thursday, on Friday, so... Different he, issues oh, coming ah, in. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So he needs to be also, it's his responsibility to, to, to be careful and to show them the limits. Because I knew, and in so many stages, it's not only her fault, it's as the sister mentioned, the resident alim's fault at some stages, when they don't uh, show the right limitation to the uh, brother sister patient yes yes <laughs> yes yes, yes yeah. and sometimes what can happen is you're thinking one way but the other person's thinking something else so you you're you're being your friendly you know accommodating self mm -hmm. but you're with somebody who's completely their headspace is completely different to where you are mm -hmm. so people's intentions and mind you can't control that you can only be who you are but like with work and with school there are protocols and boundaries you know when you've crossed that line and mm -hmm. she's written the letter she knows quite clearly where she's, she's yeah, heading no, the, sister, the sister does know I, I was wondering if this is a, this can be potentially a, a big problem with sisters who are vulnerable i say vulnerable in different in the, in, the, in the wide sense and that is there a need for more sisters that are students of knowledge to become more resident alims or to play a role in the center so it's not only a male because you mentioned something in another episode where you said it's sometimes difficult for a sister to go to go and speak to a a man about a particular issues so it should be more knowledgeable sisters or sisters that are sort of associated with them and also even if it's some the, the knowledgeable person is 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 the the male alim but the sister sits with him as a kind of social worker you well, know, sometimes you don't want to have two people in the room you sometimes might you don't, have a relationship with best. the alim but you don't like the you don't not like you don't feel comfortable with the sister i think with these things yes it would be helpful to have more women for mm. so many reasons to to be um there and on tap for when you need them but I think, you know, we have rules for teachers, we have rules for driving instructors, we have rules for doctors. It's the same with every part of society. We have to take some responsibility for our own actions as mm -hmm. adults, mm -hmm. sane thinking adults, 
and you know if the island feels that potentially feel vulnerable adults that time, they, they, they should be protected well um, i would hope this person island is of sound mind and is very Inshallah, clear and can Inshallah. pick up on who is vulnerable and not um and you know can control themselves but i think it's the same kind of situation we have at work and schools and everywhere else. People have to have a bit of responsibility over their own actions. Sure, sure. And she is. She's saying, look, I feel that this is wrong. I think she's saying subtly, um, but this is how I feel. How do I deal with it? So I think we're treating her quite softly. It's a, it's, I mean, the idea of having sisters in the mosque or in mm -hmm. the community centers is a great idea. Uh, mm -hmm. At the same time, we probably need different members mm -hmm of society to be present there but uh, i don't think it's the idea of having a sister as a result island because then we may end up having brothers falling in love <laughs> <laughs> yes That's a very point. true point. and then good what point. will happen good point. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll, we'll, we'll move on to the next scenario if that's okay um, I have another interesting letter mm -hmm. um, and it reads dear it takes two i have recently got married and although i have no prior experience in regards to marriage uh, I think there may be something wrong with my marriage. My husband needs the aid of pornography to get intimate with me. Is this normal? Am I not sure how, um, excuse me, I am not sure how best to handle this situation. Please advise. This is a a, uh, a very brave sister that's that's uh, put forward this letter and inshallah we can uh, come up with some creative ways of trying to explore this issue. But the first thing that comes to mind is that Pornography is haram, pornography is a fitna, but she probably knows this and he probably knows this, so it's beyond just the, the legal the legal side of things. Yeah, it sounds like uh, she knows, uh, the, she diagnosed the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a problem probably in, in this uh, relationship, but it's not end of the world. Probably because at some stages, uh, early days of marriage, the husband uh, face or go through some problems where he can't. If this is the case, because it happens so many times, then she probably would be able to understand. And they both can make uh, a better use of what they are doing in order to get into a normal uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. But <coughs> the question is so short and I really don't know or not fully sure whether this is the case or there is a deeper problem. Well, I think mm. in a marital situation, any relationship situation, marital situation, you shouldn't need the aid of um, outside props in order to um, have a physical relationship. That is what she's saying. The fact that he needs that in order to function on that level. There is a sit there is a problem. Yeah. Um and it's she does say need. It does sound right. like and need it and sounds just more, more it or sounds experimenting. It's definitely more than a physical problem. So is it a fact that he's not attracted to her? maybe it's a fact that, you know, we don't know what his background is. Maybe he um, you know, was born and raised here and we all know in the studies they show that from the age of eight, most boys and children have been um, subjected to some kind mm -hmm. of pornography. Especially in the internet age. Internet yeah. age, yeah, yeah. on the mobile phones, you can access it so easily. Mm -hmm. So from eight to nine, and let's look at some of the films. It's, in, you know, it's full of pornography yeah. in a subtle way. Even, you know, soap operas after nine or whatever. It's really full of, um, you know, physical content. So... Maybe we don't know his background was used to this. Now it's got to a stage where he he's cannot. desensitized he, or something. It, like he's this, yeah. desensitized, and it takes him to you know subject himself to those things in order to um, perform in a marital sense. Mm -hmm. We don't know, mm -hmm. but I think you know, poor sister, it must be awful. I think for women psychologically as well, mm -hmm. that it does something to your confidence when you don't feel good enough in order to have those sides of your uh, needs met. It really is like, what more can I do? What, what, do you mean like what's the wrong with me? Feel inadequate almost like? Well, yes, because so why would you turn to something else mm -hmm. when I'm readily available? Why would you? Is it something I'm doing? And a lot of the times, you know, it's, it sounds like it's more than a physical problem because 
when he um, does that, I'm sure he, he can have a physical relationship. So what's really going on psychologically? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to ask you, so is, uh, there are therapists that specialize in uh, physical relationships, yeah, yeah. the intimate you know, relationship aspects of marriage about intimacy. Is that permissible for them to both, if they were to see, go and see a therapist as a, as a couple oh. to help in that area, as opposed to just him having a, if it was an addiction or just a problem? Mm. Him, him going along could they go as a couple to, to, of course uh, in fact this is one of the things i was going to say uh, first of all uh, clearly uh, there is a need for a specialist to intervene uh, number two both of them uh, number two first i think he needs, he should be seen by someone and then both of them maybe number three mm -hmm. but number four it should be someone who understand uh, their background because if it's not then they may end up in a bigger um, problem so just for clarification when you say background do you mean when you say background what do you mean um, culture or, 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 or whether it's individual culture, history or? culture religion uh, the psychologist I mean I'm talking about statistically when we go through things the psychologist should know uh, the source of the problem, whether this guy came from Arabic tribe, right, and God knows where or she came from Timbuktu, mm -hmm. they need to understand the, the, because the problem sometimes, I mean, put it that way, we got couples or individuals, we ask them to, to go and see specialists. The specialists are British or French, grew up in the West or America. They can't understand the Iraqi or Iranian or Indian or Pakistani or African mentality. In order, forget about they who's can't right. They don't understand. They don't. They don't. They, they, don't. The they, don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can't because they haven't been through. You can't blame them. Mm -hmm. uh, so, when they give suggestions, uh, both couples need to be aware that he is not familiar or she is not familiar with their culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes they may suggest things which complicate matters and so on and so forth. This is a very sensitive matter. The therapist, uh, the psychologist, the family therapist, whoever he is, he should uh, have full idea about uh, the background, the family, the community, the culture of the patients and, and here we've got a problem we've got two people known as patients mm -hmm. and uh, when they go to a western therapist uh, w some of his suggestions maybe the sister can't understand it and mm. and so on and so forth mm -hmm. two things i wanted to mention it's interesting you mentioned culture let's remember and remind viewers that this industry is an industry like the movie industry yeah. it's not real to life so like in the movies you see people that look like barbie most women don't look like barbie or whatever um, and this is an industry that promotes things that aren't real or relationships doesn't promote relationships no and we're looking at relationships so we must educate both males and females to say what you see in a magazine or in a film or whatever isn't a reflection of real life and that's not where you're going to learn what relationships are just wanted to say there were a few brothers from africa mm -hmm. who were saying before they got married they would watch these type of things so they would know th and when they got married and they didn't get those type of things they were shocked and we the sisters were saying because it's not real i i, I want us to carry this on after the break because there's a okay. few more questions that i think i have to ask based on this scenario because it's it is quite a deep and relevant scenario but just a short stop for a short break hope to see you on the other side assalamu alaikum <laughs> 